the question 12 says a capacitor was initially charged with charge q naught the switch s is closed at t equal to 0 the time instant when charge on capacitor becomes q naught by 2 is well essentially we can say that this circuit is electrical analog of damped oscillation right of damped mechanical oscillation now the differential equation for a damped mechanical equation is something like this m d2x by dt square because we can use the result for damped oscillation by having a proper analogy so the differential equation for the damped oscillation is m d2x by dt square plus b dx by dt plus kx is 0 this is the differential equation for a damped oscillation right now in this particular case suppose the switch has been closed and let us say current here is i so we need to apply the kirchhoff's law in fact kirchhoff's loop law and if we do that the equation that we are getting is and supposing that charge at some instant here is q then we have q by c minus ir minus l d i by d t is equal to 0 and uh, another important point here is that if we are considering current like this then i is minus d q by d t ok. So, if I put that then we get the equation q by c plus r d q by d t and plus l d t q by d t square is equal to 0. So, we can see that there is in fact let us write it again uh, in a, a slightly different form so that we can easily compare the first differential equation with this. So, this turns out to be L d 2 q by d t square plus r d q by d t plus q by c is equal to 0 and we can see that the for b the analogous term the corresponding term in this oscillation is r and for m here the term is l and in fact the question basically means to ask the amplitude of charge right so it's a damped oscillation it's like a damped lc oscillation i would say and where initial charge was q naught so that means initial amplitude was q naught what's the time after which the amplitude becomes q naught by 2 now we know again from this damped oscillation that amplitude at time t is given as initial amplitude into e to the power minus b t by 2 m. So, extending the analogy charge q can be written as q naught into e to the power instead of minus b t by 2 m we can write minus r t by 2 l. Now, if I put the value of q as q naught by 2 then we have q naught by 2 is equal to q naught e to the power minus r t by 2 l or ln 2 is equal to r t by 2 l and the value of t then is 2 l by r ln 2 which actually is matching with option b. So, option b is correct for question 12. Let us go to the next question now. Question 13 says a radioactive nucleus at rest disintegrates into two nuclei a and b. The kinetic energy of nucleus b is twice of that of a the ratio of radii of nuclei a and b is ok. So, well the concepts involved here are the concept of nucleus and also the conservation of linear momentum these are the concepts involved. Now, because the nucleus was initially at rest so total momentum after disintegration is also going to be 0 which means that the magnitude of momentum of both a and b are equal. Let us say that magnitude of momentum is p then the kinetic energy of b becomes p square by 2 times mass of b that is the kinetic energy of b and this is supposed to be 2 times the kinetic energy of a that means 2 times p square by 2 m a ok and so this gives us the ratio of m a by m b let us put that value m a by m b ratio of the masses of the two nuclei m a by m b we find that it is equal to 2 and uh, where we have to find ratio of radii but we can take that mass is 
equal to density into a volume right so volume of the nucleus we can take as 4 pi by 3 r cube and we can take the density of the nucleus to be constant so we can see that mass is proportional to r cube right and so we have ma by mb is equal to 2 will imply that r a by r b cubed is 2 and so r a by r b the ratio of radii of the nuclei will be 2 raised to the power 1 by 3 well this matches with option b so option b is correct for question 13 let's go to the next question now question 14 says a stationary hydrogen atom emits a photon corresponding to first line of Balmer series. If mass of hydrogen atom is m, then recoil speed of hydrogen atom is. Okay, the topic is from atoms. Well, the question is from the topic atoms. And uh, so what again, and also there is conservation of linear momentum involved. So in magnitude, the momentum of the hydrogen atom after the emission of photon will be same as the magnitude of momentum of the photon okay so let's write expression for lambda the wavelength of the emitted photon and the expression is 1 by lambda happens to be equal to Rydberg constant r into now here the transition is happening this is the first line of Balmer series that means the electron is making transition from n equal to 3 to n equal to 2 so that is the transition involved n equal to 3 to n equal to that is the first line of Balmer series okay so this is then 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 3 square let us simplify this this is r and then we have 4 and 9 so denominator put, let's put 36 and in the numerator it is 9 minus 4 so it's 5 so 1 by lambda we are getting is equal to 5 r by 36 and so the momentum of photon p which is h by lambda is simply 5 r h by 36 and that is equal to mass of the atom m into the recoil speed v so the value of v is coming out to be 5 r h divided by 36 m and if we look at the options it is matching with option d so option d is correct for question 14 let's go to the next question now question 15 says an equiconvex lens mu equal to 1.5 has focal length 20 centimeter in here is placed as shown the new focal length of the system is well clearly the question is from the topic uh, refraction ray optics and uh, we can apply the lens makers formula and also the concept of refraction at spherical surfaces let's first find the radius of the surfaces of the equiconvex lens and for that we use the lens makers formula so in air the focal length is 20 centimeters so we have equation 1 by 20 so the equation is 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 into 1 minus r1 well the equation is 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so mu minus 1 here is 1.5 minus 1 or 0.5 or 1 by 2 and it is 1 by r minus minus 1 by r so it's plus 1 by r again so that means on the right hand side we have 1 by r so we are getting the value of r as 20 centimeter so each surface has radius 20 centimeter now on the left there is still mu is 1 but on the right of the lens there is a medium of refractive index 4 so to find the new focal length let's apply the concept of refraction at spherical surfaces at both the surfaces we can consider that the ray is coming from infinity and uh, the final value of v after two refractions will give us the value of focal length okay so for the first refraction the equation is 1.5 
by v1 we can call because this is not the final image position this is the intermediate image position so we are calling it v1 instead of calling it v so 1.5 by v1 the formula is mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r so well first term we have written the second term is mu1 by u so this term will be 0 because u is minus infinity so we can simply put 0 here and on the right hand side is mu2 minus mu1 which is 1.5 minus 1 which is 0.5 or 1 by 2 and the value of r we already have is uh, 20 centimeter so this is one equation and for the second refraction we have mu2 as 4 so 4 and the final value is f now so 4 by f minus 1.5 by v1 is equal to mu2 minus mu1 that means 4 minus 1.5 which is 2.5 divided by r now is going to be minus 20 centimeter right so minus 20 now if i add these two equations just to eliminate v1 we get 4 by f is equal to 1 by 40 minus 5 by 40 because 2.5 is 5 by 2 and this is minus 4 by 40 well the value of f comes out to be minus 40 centimeter and so focal length of the new system we can take as 40 centimeter so option b is correct let's go to the next question now